Hi, my name's Stephen Cronin. Um, thanks for watching again. And today I'm going to show you how to paint this simple little uh, Dartmoor scene, very limited palette. So for this paint, I've just used the four colours, which were raw sienna, burnt umber, light red, and Payne's grey. I've got my large on Ranson Hake, and it was 15 by 11 watercolour paper. I'm just going to start by wetting the paper all over. This will just soften everything up and stop the paper doing all crinkly the way it sometimes does. Then I'm going to go into a bit of, a bit of raw sienna and just bash that in all the way down to the, to the bottom. Add in a little bit of ultramarine in there, a bit more water. Not ultramarine, light red. Bit of burnt umber to the mix. Just a little bit of Payne's grey, just to darken it up a little bit. A bit more raw sienna. A bit more water. Let's get that flowing down the page a little bit more. And then a bit more raw sienna. Burnt umber, Payne's grey. I'm just gonna just do a few little little clays. I'm just gonna see what it looks like before I decide whether I'm gonna re-wet it, dry it and re-wet it and do it again, which I'm possibly thinking is the favourite option at the moment. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. First I'm just going to pull it flat. I didn't get that one in quite right, just down there. It's just come away, see that one. Let's just pull that. So it's flat against the board again. Give it a quick dry. It's as good as I need it to be. And I'll just hold it pretty well in place while I re-wet it. And it just helps create a bit, a bit more sort of depth if you haven't quite got it right the first time. So I'm going to go raw sienna, a bit of light red. A bit of Payne's grey in there as well. Sort of dark mix going. A bit of burnt umber, Payne's grey, more on this side. And I, I'm trying to create like a dramatic sky effect. A sort of central lit area coming down into the sort of reflecting off the land somewhere. Burnt umber, a bit of light red, a bit of pine grey, just a touch more water, just to loose, loosen everything up a bit. Just go into the raw sienna. I want to preserve that sort of lit area down there. Let's put a few little clouds in, so I'm going burnt umber, pine grey, a bit of light red in there as well. Pretty much all the colours I've used, just using the four colours. in there. Just push that across, being careful not to paint over that this area. I'm just sort of, might take a little bit of practice but I can tell I'm, as I brush it across I'm sort of stopping just, just before the centre. Get a few more little clouds in there, a bit of brown, a bit of 
I am dry. Now we've got a, just got a piece of tick hitting roll there, just put out a bit of texture in there, in the sky. She doesn't work as well in the light in the lighter areas. I don't know why I bother putting it there. Always works better when you can get it into the darker areas. Soak that butt water up from the bottom of the paper. And then as the paper dries, it'll just go on darker and darker. I think I'm still not hundred percent happy to be honest with you. I'm gonna go a bit of burnt on back. I want this side to dominate a bit more with these, these clouds. You don't want sort of perfect symmetry, it just never, it never looks the same, it never looks right. I just want this cloud a bit more. See, see this got this one there, I want this one to really impose itself a bit more. Oh, that's a little bit better, I think. Right. Let's put the disc up landing. Now, the disc up landing, I'm going to clean the brush. I'm going to go raw sienna. Like it's quite quite light on the horizon line. Get the panes grey there by mistake. I mean, you can always lighten it. You should use a clean, dry brush if you want to go even lighter. See how light that gets now. I'm just taking the paint off. Really lighten it. A little bit darker underneath. We'll see an after the burnt umber. That's what I'm going to do. Let's put a little little cottage in. So now I want this nice and dark silhouette against the sky. So I've just dipped the corner of the hairs into the water just to bring them together. Bit of brown, bit of Payne's grey. Paper's still wet, so I won't get a really sharp edge. But I wait till it's dry, and then I'll put it in again on the top of it, just to really try and get it dark. Sometimes you have to have two or three different layers to get it really, really dark. But there's no point putting each layer on until the paper's dry. So I'm just going to put a little roof on like that. You know, it's still wet, it's going a little bit soft, let's put a little chimney on. And, uh, a little wall there, that's coming down there like that. So that's the basic shape of our little, little cottage. When it's dry, I'll go over that again, just to really get it dark. Oh, Sienna. Let's get a bit of burnt on, but a bit of light red in there. I've got a little tree. I want a tree again, I want it silhouetted, so I'm getting a bit of brown, a bit of pine grey. Just pop that in there. Okay, it's getting a bit, little bit higher. Just about to see the little trunk in there. Let's make this flat against the board. Just stretch just a little bit. Just re clip it there with these ball with these um clips there. I want to put this stone wall in. That's what I do about it. I might just put the path in next. I'm just doing a bit of red, a bit of brown. Just a touch of the pan's grey. And then it sort of comes, comes out of the house. 
and it just sweeps across there like that. And then we've got the wall there. So I'm just going to quite a dark colour, and then what I'll do, I'll use the pulling of the plastic car just to scrape out to try and look like a sort of dry stone wall effect. Blocking the wall a little bit first. The yeah. wall sort of continues down there, something like that. There's also a little gate there, I might just put that on in a minute. Or oh, should I mark? Oh. Should, should I see if we put the gate in first? Just see what it looks like. I just Scrape it out with a bit of card. See, look, just scrape the gate out. And a bigger post there. And then, uh, big bits of stone. And I'll just do the odd stone here and there. I'm not going to do the old wall, just to give the impression that it is a stone wall. Mm -hmm. So a little bit on this side. This is Trying to be fairly subtle, just give a hint of a something there. Let's just scrape this out again, just try and define it a little bit better. And we got a little gate. Want a little bit of just put a little bit of grass even there. I'm just gonna want to quite a dark colour, again a bit of brown, well, a bit of everything really like brown, red, paint's grey. But I want this quite dry. Just imagine it's just like it's meant to be like just little bits of grass even there. Just dab dab dab. Put that, make that building a little bit more silhouetted against that sky. I want to put it on really dark now. So first, just get the very tips of your hairs, and just to make you sure you get all your hairs together. And I'm just giving a bit of brown, a bit of Payne's grey, nice dark mix. And then roof, pop the roof on, and that bit down there. Uh, little chimney, another one the other end. See how much darker that is now because I let it dry first and then put another layer on. Um, a few bit of dabs even there. Again, we can scrape out like a little little porch thing there. A little, little window there. Oh, 
there's just little details here and there. And then if I just darken that a little bit, have like a few little, maybe like a few little fence posts. Put some across there. Still a bit, just about get away with it. And like little fence posts across there. I just want to put some shadows in to just to try and finish it off. So, just a bit of brown, a bit of red, a little bit of Payne's grey. Yeah, you can imagine, so we've got the, the light sort of coming across there and just in the shadow of this house down there and there's a little wall a shadow from there and a little shadow from this gate What I'm going to do now is put I think we need a little figure. So I'll just switch to the little rigger brush. A bit of brown, a bit of Payne's grey. Dark mix. And let's just have a little man. shadows that's pretty much straight the way down and the dog shadow and then last but not least I'm just going to stick my name down in this corner Like the so here's our painting with the mountain so let's go and have a closer look at it now the sky area I did in, in two two washes if you remember but before you put the second one on you, you really need to make sure the, the papers is, is dry really because otherwise it'll just go all over the place if the paper and paint's dry then it should stay in place while you re-wet it and it just helps you create more sort of depth um, and, and textures in the sky. The main thing I was trying to achieve was this sort of trying to create this dramatic light effect coming th through through the scene. And so I've put some really sort of dark, cloudy areas in just to contrast against in, against the, the the really well lit areas. Also, the cottage here is putting really dark to silhouette against the light sky. Just a little bit of scraping here. To, here and there with the cards, just a few little windows and, and fence posts, little eight building. And down in the foreground here, we've got our little little stone wall. So I've just put it in nice and dark, and then just scraped a few little stones here and there, just to suggest the wall there. A bit more wall on the other side, and then the the, the actual uh, gate. I just scraped in with the card. I didn't paint anything in at all there. And then we got a little figure, a little man there with his dog walking off into the uh, great outdoors. Well that's it for this painting, I hope you like that. Don't forget to paint along with me. Keep practicing and very best of luck to you and see you again soon.